Church, if you are there, I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're happy to be together tonight. And I'm so happy. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray this will not be your last time of coming. Amen. This is a Bible study session. And we're going to study the Bible together with you and with everyone else today in Jesus' name. Amen. We are transmitting the Bible study to many parts of the world, Nigeria, countries in Africa, and outside Africa. So we'll be catching your faces. I'll be showing your faces to the world. And um, so I want you to pay attention. Don't sleep. And if you have the Bible, you open the Bible. If you don't have, you're listening to the verses I'm quoting. And then I'll explain everything to you. We normally take a long time, longer than you expect. But tonight, we'll do our best to keep you awake. Yeah. Will you stay awake? Yeah. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. And we thank you for members and invitees who are here tonight. We're asking, Lord, that you explain your word in such a way that everybody will have something to take back home in Jesus' name. And we pray that you make us see Jesus. Jesus crucified. Jesus on the cross. Jesus our Savior and Jesus who has gone to heaven to prepare a place for us and we pray that none of us will miss out in that great provision of Christ in Jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray God bless you consider tonight we are studying from John chapter 19 and I'm going to select some verses actually we're studying from verse 23 all through to verse 42 but I'm going to select some verses to start with so that you understand what we are about to do tonight let me read from verse 23 it says then the soldiers when they had crucified Jesus took his garments and they made four parts to every soldier a part and also his coat now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout there's a word there i want you to understand i want you to pick up is the word crucified look at verse 23 then the soldiers when they had crucified jesus so there's one word there crucified but as he was crucified actually before he was crucified he had to carry his own cross to the place of crucifixion i'm reading now from verse 17 in verse 17 and he bearing his cross went forth into the place called the place of his call which is called in the hebrew golgotha so you find another word there the cross he bore his cross he carried his cross and he got to the place where he was crucified and then as he got to that place it says they crucified him look at verse 18 where they crucified him and two others with him on either side one and jesus in the midst so they crucified him look at verse 30 in verse 30 when jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost there's a word there you want to underline in your bible finished it is finished and eventually in verse 34 it says but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out their water and blood or blood and water tonight we're looking at the purpose and the provision of christ's crucifixion already i've read the verses to you and you know we're talking about the crucifixion of jesus christ 
on the cross at Calvary as we study tonight. But what's the purpose? And why was he crucified? What's the provision? What do you have? What do I have as a result of that crucifixion? There are many people that just tell the story of the crucifixion. Christ was crucified. Crucified on the cross. They mentioned Friday, they mentioned Saturday, they mentioned Sunday. Then he rose again. They know the story. They might even describe to you the pain and the agony that he went through. They might describe to you how the betrayal took place, the people that took him, the people that arrested him, and eventually was nailed on the cross. And even the seven saints on the cross, there are people that can repeat that, but they do not understand. What's the reason why? Why was he crucified? For what purpose was he crucified? And that's what we're looking at tonight. The purpose and the provision of Christ's crucifixion. Let me first of all see. We we'll see him on the cross. Come to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. And I read here from verse 42. We we'll see Christ now on the cross and when he was on the cross what did they see the people that saw him there how did they jeer at him how did they mock him how did they ridicule him look at this in verse 42 matthew chapter 27 he saved others himself he cannot save they were making fun of him that he healed many people he saved many people he calmed the storm and he solved their problems now he's on the cross and he said himself he cannot save that's true that's true because he had to die for you he had to die for me and if he saved himself if he came down from the cross you will not be saved and because he counted your salvation as the priority as the important thing as the preeminent thing in his mind that's why he didn't come down from the cross in fact they said if he be the king of israel let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him let him come down from the cross and we will believe him why didn't he respond to that because if he came down from the cross and they said they believed him they couldn't be saved there's no way anyone can be saved without jesus christ taking our place on the cross of calvary in verse 43 they said he trusted in god let him deliver him now if he will if he will have him for he said i am the son of god now we come to first corinthians chapter one we're looking at him on the cross you must see him on the cross because if you don't see him on the cross you cannot see him wearing the crown because the cross comes before the crown and you have to see him on the cross before you can see him wearing the crown you have to see him dying for you before you can see him making a place for you in heaven we we'll see him on the cross look at this in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 first corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of god he died on the cross so that through that cross and through that death and through that crucifixion the power of god will be channeled unto you man is weak we have a lot of challenges and a lot of enemies satan is our enemy and there's nobody that can match satan sin is our enemy and there's nobody that can match sin and say by myself i will defeat a sin no you cannot by yourself and then there are there's suffering in the world suffering is so much it can overwhelm you but you know the power that comes to us we overcome sin we overcome satan overcome sickness overcome suffering it comes through jesus christ and there's only one way whereby that power will be transferred to you it is by the power of the cross look at that verse 18 again it says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness the people that hear the story of the cross they say i don't understand that i don't understand the wisdom in that i don't understand how he took my place i don't understand and because they don't understand it's foolishness to them and if they count it as foolishness and they say i'm not a fool i'm not going to believe that they will perish 
but thank god tonight those who are here you will not perish because you understand it is this cross that is the power of god i'm coming to ephesians chapter 2 we're looking at christ on the cross you see him in your mind on the cross and he died for you and as you picture imagine him on the cross dying for you the power that lives a righteous life makes us to live righteous life will come to every one of us in jesus name look at ephesians chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 14. ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 for he is our peace who has made both one and he has broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished look at that having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace he'll make you a new man a new woman your life will change your life will be transformed but how look at this in verse 16 and he but and the, and that he might reconcile both to god in one body by the cross you see that he reconciles us to god whether we're jews or gentiles that's what it means by both there both the jew and the gentile both the white and the black both those on the other side of the sea and on this side of the sea he reconciles us to god by the cross and then he says having slain the enmity thereby and he came and preached peace unto you which were afar off and to them which were near you see two kinds of people there the people that are far off afar off in idolatry afar off in paganism afar off in heathenism afar off as gentiles and the people who are very near very near because they were jews very near because we were worshiping god God, a little bit but not totally acceptable but those who are near the jews and those who are far away the gentiles he brings us to god and he reconciles us to god by his death on the cross of calvary look at verse 18 for through him through him only through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father if you're going to get to the father it is through that death that he died on the cross and thank god you can come and you're welcome colossians chapter 2 in colossians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 13 colossians chapter 2 verse 13 and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh as he quickened together with him having forgiven you how many trespasses all your trespasses you will always carry guilt always carry condemnation except your forgiveness coming from jesus coming from christ because he died for you on the cross look at verse 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross that's the reason for the cross all your condemnation everything that was written against you what does that mean every time you do every time you are done every time since you are born you did something wrong you said something wrong there is an invisible policeman that is uh, following after you and is recording uh, everything is in the intelligence and he knows everything you've done he knows everything you have thought and everything was written against you and they were waiting for you that you will soon come over what does that mean you will soon die and when you come over when you get over there they open the books and then they say look at what you said look at what you did look at the people you hurt and look at the people you destroyed and look at this and look at this what have you got to say your sin will silence you but jesus christ didn't want you to do that he didn't want you to get to the other side and then your sin will silence you so 
he went to the cross for you and everything that you had done everything reaching against you he nailed that to the cross he carried it to the grave and when he rose up he left it there it will never come up again but you see you must accept that you must believe that and it is when you believe that it says in verse 15 and having spoiled principalities and powers principalities and powers you understand what that means the principles of the powers that oppress people and they're supervising everything and they, they manage everything very well they make sure that as principal principalities and as the powers of darkness they make sure that anybody on this face of the earth will not go scot-free but jesus said you will be free yeah. am i talking to somebody there tonight you will be free as you believe on the lord jesus christ he spoiled he destroyed he paralyzed he made impotent all the principalities and the powers and then he says he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it now you understand why he went to the cross now i'm going to pick up that word crucified because we're told they crucified him he was crucified on the cross we're coming back to first corinthians chapter one in first corinthians chapter one and i'm reading here from verse 23 first corinthians chapter one i'm reading from verse 23 it says but we preach christ crucified that's what we preach you know why we preach christ crucified because it is that crucifixion that will bring you salvation that will bring you forgiveness that will bring a change in your life it is that crucifixion that will bring reconciliation with god and it says we preach christ crucified unto the jews a stumbling block but and unto the greeks foolishness but unto them which are called thank god he has called me i say thank god he has called me as he called you as you respond to that call and you look at jesus christ who took your place on the cross of calvary thank god salvation is yours today forgiveness is yours today and your name will be written in the book of life in heaven in jesus name it says we preach christ crucified unto the jews a stumbling block unto the greeks foolishness but unto them which are called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god christ the power of god and the wisdom of god look at verse 30 but of him are ye in christ jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom you are going to have more wisdom today righteousness you have righteousness today and sanctification sanctification is yours today and redemption that's the purpose that's the purpose and that's the provision that he made for us on the cross of Calvary now in Galatians chapter 2 Galatians chapter 2 remember what we're looking at now crucified we have looked at him on the cross now we're looking at him crucified and it says something here it says that we have a part in that crucifixion look at it in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I am crucified with Christ you know Paul the apostle here you he could have said we are crucified with Christ but he said I'm going to tell you that personally it is not my being an apostle that is going to get me to heaven it is the personal faith i have in the lord jesus christ and i accept that he did it for me and i am crucified with christ you know it is not your position it's not like i'm a bishop it's not like i'm a great man it's not like i'm a great important woman that's 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 good that's good but that doesn't get you to heaven it is this personal faith in christ to say i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me because he died for you now he's going to share his life with you and he says and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the face of the son of god who loved me and he gave 
himself for me the reason why he died for you the reason why he was crucified is because he loved you and he gave himself for you what's the implication of that for your own life look at galatians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 24 galatians chapter 5 verse 24 and they that are christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and laws the flesh and you know the flesh will give us problem the affections and the laws and the bad things and the dirty things but now he says those things are crucified with christ and so you are free I said you are free. Uh, I want you to understand this. It's like you know somebody has been roaming about, uh, you know, the street terrorizing everybody, and he comes to knock at your door. He comes to knock at your window, and he comes to terrorize you. And your life is not uh, having any peace because of this one that is going about. And the names of these people going about, one is lost and evil affection evil affection will knock at your door laws will knock at your door affections will knock at your door but one day these two people that are roaming about and raging in the community they are nailed to the cross will they trouble you anymore no the affection the evil affection that could have troubled you is now nailed to the cross and the loss that could have troubled you and pulled you down to the grave and pull you down to hell is nailed to the cross thank god tonight you are free look at galatians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 14 it says but god forbid that i should glory save in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world is crucified unto me it says even the world all the problems of the world all the pollutions of the world and the things that will normally trouble me and pull me back it says the world is crucified unto me and i unto the world your problems are over the uh, powerlessness in your life is over tonight now in romans chapter 6 romans chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 6 romans chapter 6 verse 6 it says knowing this somebody must tell you that's what i'm telling you tonight if you are not told how will you know how would you know if somebody did not read it to you from the bible how will you know if somebody did not explain to you but today you know you know about christ's crucifixion for you and you know about his death for you and you know about the victory that you are going to have you know i know i said i know, I know. you know it is what you know that will put you over it is what you know that will give you the victory the people who are ignorant they're in bondage those who are ignorant they're in bondage because they don't know about christ they don't know about crucifixion they don't know about the cross they don't know the purpose why they don't know the reason why but thank god i know look at verse 6 it says knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that's what you need to know tonight that the old man that used to give you trouble the things you didn't want to do you will do because of the power and the pull of that old man but then it says that old man you couldn't overcome you couldn't overpower and you couldn't in any way subdue that old man thank god tonight you know that that old man is crucified with christ it says knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed isn't that wonderful the body of sin the nucleus of sin the very root of sin and the thing that produces sin that thing will be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin henceforth we should not serve sin i am free you're free in jesus name tonight as i said we're looking at the passage in john chapter 19 john chapter 19 the purpose and the provision of christ's crucifixion as i look at the passage this long passage i'm going to divide the passage to three parts number one accomplishment accomplishment you want to see what jesus accomplished on the cross number two atonement 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 means somebody has been an offender and then is guilty is going to be judged and then somebody appeased the one that is offended and the what to use in appeasing that one so that the anger the judgment the punishment the suffering will be taken away is called atonement number two 
atonement number three acknowledgement acknowledgement that is now we know and it is acknowledged it's acknowledged by heaven it's acknowledged on earth and it's acknowledged in your heart number one accomplishment of all scriptures fulfilled accomplishment of all scriptures fulfilled you're going to find in this passage that we're looking at it says it's fulfilled that it may be fulfilled accomplishment of all scriptures fulfilled number two atonement for all our sins finished atonement for all our sins finished when you finish something you know you don't uh, come back there again and say you are working it's like when you've given a project to a builder and the builder has finished the building he has handed over the key and then he comes back and he's knocking at the door say what well, but you're finished if you are finished and you have handed over the key you're not coming back again and jesus said it is finished all your sins are finished punishment everything finished everything taken away it says it is finished that's atonement for all our sins finished number three acknowledgement of the savior foretold acknowledgement of the savior foretold we're coming to point number one now tell me number one on that side there accomplishment of all scriptures fulfilled i'm coming to john chapter 19 and i'm reading from verse 23 look at this it says then the soldiers when they had crucified jesus took his garments and they made four parts uh, to every soldier a part and also his coat now the coat was without seam woven from the top throughout and they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, let us not tear it, and, but cast lots for it, whose, uh, whose it shall be, and th that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's the word which says, they parted my raiment among them, and uh, for my vesture did he cast lots and these things therefore the soldiers did and then he goes on now to talk about mary the mother being there and then mary magdalene and jesus in verse 26 therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by a uh, whom he loved and he says unto his mother woman behold thy son then says he to the disciple behold thy mother and then from that hour the disciple took her took her unto his own home and then he goes on to say in verse 28 he says after this jesus now knowing that all things are were now tell me the word there accomplish that the scriptures might be tell me fulfill it says i thirst and then he goes on you know those two words you find there number one accomplish number two fulfill that's why i will say point number one is accomplishment of all scriptures fulfilled by the way what does that mean all the scriptures accomplished now and fulfilled i'm going to go right back to genesis chapter three genesis chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 15 and i will put enmity between thee and the woman this is god talking and this is god saying that he was going to put enmity between satan and the woman between the serpent and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and then he goes on to say it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise is heal the seed of the woman is jesus christ that's the one that came through virgin mary without any intercourse with a man and god said i'm going to put enmity between you and the seed of the woman he will bruise your head and thou shalt bruise his heel bruise his heel that is nail the heel to the cross that's crucifixion and you see here these had been written and these had been said 
way back in Genesis and yet it was now accomplished it was now fulfilled and so you know the life of Jesus Christ was not an accident everything that happened to him had been prophesied it became accomplished look at Zechariah Zechariah that's near the end of the Old Testament now Zechariah chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 7 Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7 it says awake O sword against my shepherd and remember the name of Je the title of Jesus I'm the good shepherd and he says now awake O, o sword against my shepherd against the man that is my fellow remember Jesus said I and my father are one and this is referring to Jesus he says says the Lord of hosts smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered and I will turn my hand upon the little ones again this was fulfilled and accomplished when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary look at Zechariah chapter 11 Zechariah chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 12 Zechariah 11 reading from verse 12 and I said unto them if you think good give me my prize and if not forbear so the wait for my prize tell me there 30 pieces of silver do you remember how much money Judas Caesar collected in betraying Jesus Christ? Do you remember how much it was? 30 pieces of silver. It had been prophesied. And so you see Jesus Christ, he accomplished what was reaching. And it was fulfilled. It says in verse 13, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, and a goodly price that I was priced at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the porter in the house of the Lord. That's exactly what happened later when Judas came back and said, I betrayed the innocent blood. And he said, what's that to us? And then he cast it down and he took it and they did exactly what had been prophesied here. I'm going to show you something now in Psalm 22. Psalm 22, something that was written uh, more than a thousand years before Jesus even came to this world. And look at this. Remember, we're talking about accomplishment of all the scriptures fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Look at this in uh, Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you remember who said that? Jesus Christ on the cross, he fulfilled that. And so you see all the scriptures were written concerning him. I'm reading from chapter, that chapter 22 of the Psalms. And I'm looking at uh, verse 16. It says, for the dogs have compassed me. The assembly of wicked men uh, enclosed me. They pierced my hand and my feet that's crucifixion that's exactly what he did against the lord jesus christ look at verse 18 here they patch my garments among them and cast lost upon my vesture and so he accomplished and fulfilled all those scriptures that were reaching concerning him and uh, when he said i thirst do you remember what they gave him to drink when he said, I thirst, I thirst? Anybody remember what they gave him to drink? They gave him gold, they gave him a vinegar. Look at Psalm 69. Psalm 69, and I'm reading from verse 21. It makes you to understand the Bible is the word of God. Look at these things that were reaching, reaching concerning Jesus Christ more than a thousand years before he came. And when he came, he accomplished, he fulfilled. Don't forget those two words. He accomplished and he fulfilled. That's the reason why everything he has done for you is going to accomplish everything he has done on your behalf is going to fulfill in jesus name psalm 69 reading from verse 21 they gave me also gall for my meat and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink he fulfilled that and i will come to isaiah chapter 53 isaiah chapter 53 and we're reading from verse 10. I see chapter 53, verse 10. It says, Yet it pleased the Lord. 
to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, all that he did was a sacrifice, an offering for your sin, an offering for the sins of the whole world. He shall see his seed, and it shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Uh, you know, th that verse is talking about one of the days of Jesus. Of the days of Jesus. And then after that, because he talks about the offering for sin. The sacrifice for sin. And all that he gave so that he'll take your sins away. That's why John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh the sin of the world away. And in making that offering, he giving that sacrifice, he took all your sins away. But then he said, the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That's talking about at his resurrection. That verse then talks about his death and talks about his resurrection. We're coming to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, reading about what he accomplished and what he fulfilled. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 14. And he said unto them, Now he had died, now he was buried, now he has risen from the dead. And this was after his resurrection. And now he said unto them, unto his disciples, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things, how many things? All things, if you are there, I said how many things? All things must be, tell me, fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And so you understand, he's made the sacrifice. And because he's made that sacrifice, so that your sins can be taken away. And so that your sins can be forgiven. So that you'll have peace with God. He says now, we should declare it and preach it and proclaim it everywhere. From Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the rest of the world. And coming here tonight to proclaim it unto you. And as you believe, all your sins are taken away. As you believe, all your guilt and condemnation, everything will be blotted away in Jesus' name. I come now to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 17. Now, and now, brethren, I know that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. That's the word again. Everything that God had said concerning Jesus Christ, through those prophets of the Old Testament, God has now fulfilled. What's the response? What are you to do concerning that? And what are you going to do now? Because of what has been done already by Christ. Look at verse 19. Repent ye therefore. The word therefore means everything is accomplished. Everything is fulfilled. He said he will come. He came. He said he will be betrayed. He was betrayed. He said he will die for you. He died for you. He said he will nail him to the cross. And it has happened just like that. Therefore, seeing that everything has been accomplished and seeing that everything has been fulfilled repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the lord a new day will start for you a time of refreshing will happen to you and then all your sins are gone all your sins are forgiven and a new life will come in jesus name look at verse 26 there unto you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you how many of us how many are supposed to be saved 
How many are supposed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? How many can receive forgiveness today? How many can be cleansed from all iniquity today? Look at that verse again. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. He will bless you tonight. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. From his iniquities. You can be free tonight. We're coming to point number two now. Atonement for all our sins finished. Atonement for all our sins finished. You see, he did the work. And then he said, it is finished. Let me remind you, in John chapter 19, verse 30. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, somebody shout it out for yourself. For your conviction, yes, you know that this is true. Say it out aloud. Yes, it is finished. Judgment finished. Yes, Oppression finished. Yes, Suffering finished. Yes, Suffering in hell finished. Yes, you will not go to hell. Yes, you will not perish. Yes, because Jesus said, It is finished. And he bowed the said, and gave up the ghost. The question is, what did he mean by that? It is finished. He meant that the atonement has now been finalized. Finalized, finished. It is not to be done again. Atonement. Look at it. In Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 11 here is what jesus referred to and here is what jesus did and he did it on your behalf you look at this in leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls to make an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul why because you understand the soul that sinneth it shall die because of your sin the death penalty has been upon you and there is nothing that can take that away if you come to offer let's say you know that we're building the church and you come to offer some blocks that's good that's good because without those blocks we cannot have the church building but you know the the block does not have blood and it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul or maybe you know that uh, you know we are doing something and say i bring money that's good because uh, money will help us to buy this buy that and money will help us to carry on a lot of the ministry but you know the money does not have blood and it is when i see the blood what will happen I will pass over you it is when i see the blood i know that somebody or something you know, has been killed on your behalf has been destroyed on your behalf and jesus christ came to fulfill that and it is the blood of jesus christ that makes that atonement do you remember you've heard about the story of cain and abel and some people were wondering how is it cain brought of the fruit of the ground and it wasn't that you know they were bad bad uh, fruit or whatever it was good but you know that fruit was coming from the ground and that fruit had been cursed because the ground had been cursed and the fruit did not have any blood and god said cain if you had done well you would have been forgiven if you have not done well the sin offering is still there that has blood that will be your substitute go and take it and offer but no he wouldn't do that and he perished but in the case of abel he took a lamb and because that one had blood that's the reason why abel was forgiven and saved abel is now in heaven when you leave this world if you have made jesus christ your savior and to be the atonement for your sin you'll see abel in heaven yeah. well you don't know abel but you know me you will see me in heaven yeah. i will see you in heaven yeah. 
because it is the blood that makes the atonement and let me show you something here now matthew chapter 26 matthew chapter 26 and see what jesus christ himself said concerning you know, the blood of atonement he tells us in matthew chapter 26 verse 28 he says for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins there we are again the sin that is going to grant us favor with god that will appease him that will take the anger of god away from us is the blood that jesus shed for you for me for us and for everyone and i pray that tonight you'll make that blood avail for you as you believe in jesus name how do you believe you'll say jesus died for me the blood of jesus will cleanse me and the blood of jesus will take all my sins away it will happen tonight Amen. romans chapter 3 in romans chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and what does why are we reading that is to remind you that nobody can say i'm all right i'm like an angel no you are not I'm all right i don't have any guilt no you're not right you're not right you have guilt all the world has become guilty in the sight of god all have seen and come short of the glory of god if you think back if you look at your life since you were young the things you said that you said why did i say that i shouldn't have said that the things you did and then you thought why did i do that i shouldn't have do, done that and the things that brought guilt and condemnation to your heart that's why it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god now there are people that will not point at themselves that they're sinners they're pointing to other people but you understand while they are pointing to other people other people are pointing to them and so we point to you you point to us we point to each other everyone has seen and what can take our sins away look at it now verse 24 it says being justified freely being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god has set forth as the propitiation that's another word is a big word there it just means the cleansing of your sin and the covering of your sin and it says through faith in his blood very important it is through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission removal cleansing or forgiveness of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of god it says in verse 26 to declare i say at this time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in him in jesus i believe tonight you believe tonight your sins are forgiven give me a good amen romans were you looking at romans chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 romans chapter 5 verse 6 it says for when we were yet without strength you see that i said that earlier we don't have any strength against satan any strength against sin any strength against evil spirits and evil powers principalities and powers we don't have any strength against the suffering you know? and we don't have anything we're going to give to escape the judgment of god but it says when we're yet without strength in due time what happened christ died for the ungodly it says for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die but god commendeth his love toward us i'm going to read that again this for me now but god commendeth his love toward me but god commendeth his love toward toward you toward me toward us in that while we were yet sinners what happened christ died for us who did he die for he died for you as you accept that tonight a change will happen 
God will take away your name from the book of condemnation. He'll bring your name to the book of life. You have the joy of salvation, the peace and the rest of mind. Look at it, it goes on in verse 9. Much more then, be now justified by his blood. Justified by his blood. Not by our good works, not by the money we give to beggars, not by any good deed we have done. We're justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. This verse 11 is important. Listen, and not only so, but we also joy, we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have received the atonement by whom we have received the atonement the atonement for all our sins finished it is finished Amen. hebrews chapter 9 in hebrews chapter 9 here i'm reading from verse 22 hebrews chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 22 tells us something about the centrality of the blood and the importance of the blood this is not just any blood the blood of jesus it says in hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 it says and almost all things are by the lord purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission without the crucifixion of christ without the death of christ and without the blood of jesus christ that spotless blood blameless blood pure blood perfect blood without that shedding of blood of the lord jesus christ is no removal of sin is no forgiveness but now thank god we have forgiveness i have forgiveness i have redemption i have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. In First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Reading from verse 18. For as much as she know. I pray you will know this from the death of your heart. You'll know without any shaking. Without any doubt. You'll know that you know that this one thing is true concerning you. For as much as she know that she ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold as silver and gold you're not coming before god and you're not saying lord you know how much money i've been giving to you how many how much money i've been giving to the church silver and gold you know how much i contributed you know how much i gave you know that we're not redeemed with silver or with gold and then it goes on from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers look at this look at this verse 19 but with the precious blood of who of christ but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot that's how we're saved that's how we're redeemed and that's how the peace of god comes to us it will be yours tonight Amen. through that blood we're saved do you know through that blood we're sanctified look at chapter 10 of hebrews hebrews chapter 10 i read from verse 10 hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 for it says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It's done it once for all. It will not be done again. It's done it for you and it is finished. Somebody help me shout, it is finished. Amen. Look at verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified you have been saved it will sanctify you too and it is through the blood of the lamb look at hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 we're reading from verse 20 and verse 21 hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 now 
the God of peace. He'll give you peace. That brought you again from the dead, and not Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood, you see that? It's through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect. In every good work, to do his will, walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever yeah. amen and then we come to revelation chapter one revelation chapter one atonement for all our sins finished finished revelation chapter one verse five and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Yeah. Amen. It says he has washed us from all our sins. And he did that through faith in his blood. And when he washes us like that, he doesn't just leave us on the ground level. He promotes us and lifts us up. And now we're going to reign with him. Yeah. I said I'm going to reign with him. And while you're still here on earth, you reign over every problem in Jesus' name. You reign over every affliction in Jesus' name. Because of the blood of Jesus, and because of that blood is shed for you, which you have believed. And you say, yes, I'm holding on by faith to that blood. Everything that had dominion over your life before, you will have dominion from now on in Jesus' name. Victory will be yours triumph will be yours and the power to overcome every challenge of life will be yours in jesus name in fact it tells us in revelation chapter 12 i'm reading here from verse 9 revelation chapter 12 reading from verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan we deceive us the whole world because you believe on the lord jesus christ and because you believe the blood of atonement that is shed for you that old serpent will be under your feet Amen. satan will be under your feet Amen. and the power of the devil under your feet in jesus name Amen. and it says he deceiveth the whole world he will not get you to deceive he was cast out into the earth, and its angels cast out with him. Look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And tonight, I overcome. Tonight, you overcome. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. And it says, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto the death. It says, we have the victory. And thank God you have the victory. Amen. We're looking at First John chapter 1 verse 7. First John chapter 1. Reading from verse 7. Here it tells us in uh, chapter 1 of First John, reading from verse 7, it says, But if we walk in the light, what does that mean? The light of the scripture we're receiving. The light of the teaching we're receiving. The light, the light that is shown to us now that Jesus Christ was on the cross for you and jesus christ was crucified for you you are enlightened and then you go with that light of scripture and you are walking in that light and you believe that word and you accept that word and say this is for me if we walk in the light as he is in the light 
as he is in the light not sometimes in the light and sometimes in darkness not sometimes uh, believing in the lord jesus christ and then going back to believe in idols not sometimes believing the word of god your word is a lamp unto my feet a light that shines across my way and then going back to the rituals and going back to tradition and superstition which is darkness not that you are in and out in and out but you are walking in the light as he is in the light always in the light forever in the light consistently in the light in the day in the night anywhere you find yourself you're walking in the light it says we have fellowship with one another look at this and the blood of jesus christ is son what does he do cleanses us from how many sins all sin the blood will do that the blood of jesus will do that and when he cleanses us then we're free when he cleanses us then we have peace of mind when he cleanses us we have rest in our souls it will be yours in jesus name it is finished i said it is finished say it for yourself it is finished look at this daniel chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 24 daniel chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 24 it says in verse 24 look at this 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city here is daniel daniel was looking ahead before christ came and he said this is the timetable of god and it says 77 that's actually what it means in original 77 are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city are you there in daniel chapter 9 verse 24 yeah. tell me the word that follows there tell me out loud if you're sure say it like other people are saying it to finish the transgression you see that daniel looked ahead he said somebody is coming it's called the son of man somebody is coming is a very son of god and when he comes and then he gives the timetable as to when he will come he said he will finish transgression in your life he will finish transgression in your family he'll finish transgression in all the members of the church he'll finish the transgression that transgression will not be your problem anymore you will not be rising and falling rising and falling because he has come and he said it is finished and he will finish all the transgression look at this and to make an end of sins and to make an end of sins you come to christ and then the sins you could not overcome by yourself it will overcome on your behalf and then it goes on to say to make reconciliation for iniquity it brings us to god and makes reconciliation for us and it says to bring in what kind of righteousness everlasting righteousness that's what christ has come to do that's why jesus said it is finished and then it says and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy as the lord has done it already by sacrifice on the cross of calvary it will accomplish it in your life in jesus name we're coming now to point number three and we're looking at acknowledgement of the savior foretold acknowledgement of the savior foretold we're coming to john chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 38 reading from verse 38 and after this joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of jesus but secretly for fear of the jews besought pilate that he might take away the body of jesus and pilate gave him leave and he came therefore and took the body of jesus and there came also nicodemus which at the force came to jesus by night and brought a mixture of mire and uh, aloes and uh, about an hundred pounds weight and, it, and then took day the body of jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the jews is to bury now the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new sepulchre that's a tomb where rena was never man laid and he laid 
the late Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day for the sepulcher, was nice at hand. You understand, Joseph of Arimathea, he was a rich man. And then uh, Nicodemus was also a popular person among the Jews. They came for the body of Jesus Christ so that they can bury that body. What were they doing? They were making acknowledgement of the fact that this is the Savior. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, and you'll see what they did was acknowledgement. They acknowledge it says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 9, he made his grave with the wicked. That is, you see, those people that were nailed to the cross beside him, one on this side, the other on that side. Even one of them said, We're suffering for our sin, but he has done nothing wrong. And so he died with those wicked people and for the wicked people. And so it says, He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. And with the rich, Joseph of Arimathea and uh, Nicodemus. And remember, when Isaiah wrote this in chapter 53, Jesus had, was not even born at that time. He was prophesying that when he comes, there will be an acknowledgement by the poor, by the rich, by the sinners, and by everyone. And then it says, when thou, in verse, in verse 9 there, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he has put him to grieve the suffering for you for me for us when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul verse 11 and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many are you part of that many yeah. he saves many are you part yeah. he has forgiven many people are you part of that yeah. if you have not taken part tonight it's your chance it says, for he shall bear the iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion of the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. Watch as that to do with you and with me that the savior was foretold and now there is acknowledgement of the fact that he is savior we're reading from psalm 51 psalm 51 this is what you have to do so that you too you will acknowledge so that you too you will identify with the lord jesus christ and you'll say he died for me he took my sins away and i acknowledge that i believe that and i affirm that psalm 51 verse 1 have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions that's what you will do he'll blot out your transgression you'll not have any remembrance of them anymore in jesus name wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my sin my transgression and my sin is ever before me against thee thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me look at a king he was, uh, you know, the number one in that nation of Israel at that time. And yet he said, I'm not going to pretend all I've seen and come short of the glory of God. And I know I've seen. And he confessed before the Lord. And then he said, look at verse 7. Purge me with Esau and I shall be clean. 
purge me, purge me, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out how many of my iniquities? All my iniquities, verse 10, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He will do it. Amen. I said he will do it. Uh, look, at, look at verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Your time has come psalm 103 psalm 103 i'm reading here from verse 12 psalm 103 we're reading from verse 12 because jesus died for you died for us this is what is going to happen psalm 103 verse 12 as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us amen, amen? When he says, as far as the east is from the west, he's talking about the far horizon where the sun rises. And then that's far from where the sun sets as they are far apart. And somebody in the east where the sun rises will not see the person in the west where the sun sets. He says, that way have you removed our sins from us you'll remove all your sins from you that way they will not come near you anymore in jesus name psalm 130 psalm 130 and i'm reading here from verse 8 psalm 130 verse 8 very important i'm waiting for you to open the bible psalm 130 verse 8 are you there now Okay, read it for me. One, two, three, go. And ye shall redeem all Israel from how many iniquities? All his iniquities. He's talking about you today. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. And we're looking at verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45. Reading from verse 22. It says, Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. You know, there are some people because they do not know and because they have not read all these that were reading the bible tonight they say that that salvation is for the white people uh -uh. look at this look unto me and be ye saved what follows there all the ends of the earth all the ends of the earth salvation is for everyone all over the earth and thank god tonight it is yours psalm 61 psalm 61 and i'm reading from verse 10 psalm 61 reading from verse 10 see what he will do in verse 10 i will greatly rejoice in the lord my soul shall be joyful in my god for he has closed me with the garment of salvation that's what he does when you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your salvation. He says, he has closed me with the garment of salvation and then with the robe of righteousness. Tonight, you have it. Some 60, uh, I said chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63 is the confirmation, the acknowledgement of the Savior that was foretold. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? This that is glorious in his appearance, traveling in the greatness of his train. He answers, I that speak in righteousness, tell me, mighty to save, mighty to save. No matter how far you've gone in sin, and no matter how deep you have been in sin, Jesus tonight, is, it was foretold. This was written concerning him. And it says, it's mighty to save. Verse 8, for he said, surely they are my people. I'm one of them. 
surely they are my people i said i'm one of them children that will not lie so he was their savior tonight he is our savior he is my savior i said he is my savior as you believe so it is in jesus name jeremiah chapter 23 acknowledgement of the savior foretold it tells us in jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6 in his days judah shall be saved and israel shall dwell safely this is his name whereby it shall be called the lord our righteousness say that the lord our righteousness it'll be your righteousness in jesus name it was foretold now because he has finished it it is going to be fulfilled in your life jeremiah 31 jeremiah chapter 31 reading from verse 33 jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33 but they shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord look at this i will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts i will be their god and they shall be my people people of god are they there tonight yeah. oh he'll be your god yeah. he'll be your savior yeah. he'll be your redeemer yeah. all your sins he'll take away in jesus name yeah. ezekiel chapter 36 acknowledgement of the savior foretold it was foretold and now it's fulfilled and now it's finished in ezekiel chapter 36 look at what he said he will do when he has made the offering and when he says it is finished look at what he has accomplished when he said it's finished in ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean you'll be clean your mind will be clean your life will be clean he says i will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you that's number one somebody say number one that's salvation look at number two now verse, 30, verse 26 a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh that's number two somebody say number two and the second work of grace that's sanctification it takes away the stony heart and it gives us the heart of flesh we're going to number three now look at verse 27 and i will put my spirit within you the holy ghost will come within you the holy ghost will come upon you the holy ghost will overshadow you the holy ghost will indwell you that's number three baptism in the holy ghost and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them it was prophesied and now it is going to be fulfilled it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name the time of fulfillment has come your own time of fulfillment has come look at acts chapter 13 acts chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 22 somebody help me shout the word fulfillment that's not the whole house fulfillment it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name now we're coming to acts chapter 13 verse 22 and when he had removed him he removed saul you will not be removed he raised up unto them david to be their king to whom also he gave testimony and said i have found david he will find you tonight the son of jesse a man after my own heart which shall fulfill all my will of this man's seed as god according to his promise raised unto unto israel a savior what's his name jesus. 
Jesus. Verse 38, in verse 38, it says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin, and by him, Jesus Christ, all that believe are justified all in all from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now, justification has come, salvation has come, redemption has come. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God shall first have been spoken to you. But, this is serious, but, there's a tragedy here, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. There are people that reject the free gift of God. I will not reject. And because they reject, Paul and Barnabas told them, Okay, you should have got it. It should have been yours. A place should have been for you in heaven. But because you reject and push it away from you, now we go to the Gentiles. For so, as the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee for, to be a light, of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, like you are glad tonight, like you are happy tonight, that salvation is yours, and they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained unto eternal life believed, as many as wanted eternal life and they were ordained for eternal life and they were assigned for eternal life and they were chosen for eternal life they believed i believe tonight i said i believe tonight eternal life is yours whosoever will call upon the name of the lord will be saved and whosoever comes to christ tonight he will not cast you away you are coming i said you are coming where are you? I'm coming to Christ tonight. I'm coming. I'm coming. I am coming. Right? So up and tell the Lord, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And I know that already you have accomplished it. It's fulfilled. Already there's atonement. And I know it is finished. Already there's acknowledgement. It had been foretold. And it is mine tonight. It is mine tonight. It is mine tonight. Just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I know I've gone astray. But Jesus Jesus Christ came to die for me and because he came to die for me I receive him now as my savior I receive him now as my Lord call upon him call upon him say Lord I'm sorry for any bad thing every bad thing I've done I'm sorry for my waywardness I'm sorry for my iniquity I'm sorry for my sin but now I come I see you on the cross and I see that you've died for me and I see that now you have replaced me there and you are my substitute Lord I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe and forgiveness is yours salvation is yours righteousness is yours deliverance is yours it sets you free tonight call upon the name of the lord your redemption is here